Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. My name is Chenen Nanta Sinamad, and I'm an associate professor of bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So as one of our viewer have suggested that we cover about data pre-processing, so we're going to do that in this episode. So we're going to talk about how we can handle missing data. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this episode represents the first part in a multi-part series on data pre-processing in R. And so we're going to start this off by talking about how we can handle missing data. Because when we're pre-processing the data, it is very common that some of the values are missing. Meaning that they're empty, they don't have any value, or it might have other obscure values such as question mark or minus 999. So today we're going to cover about how you can handle these types of data. So let's go to the next slide. Today we're going to use the DHFR data set and so maybe a little bit about the data set itself. DHFR stands for dihydrofolate reductase. It is an enzyme and also an anti-malarial drug target whereby the data set is comprised of 325 compounds or rows and 229 variables or columns. So of the 229 variables, one is the target variable called Y and this represents sense the biological activity. And so this variable can be classified as being either active or inactive. So if it is active, it means that the drug has good bioactivity. So if it is inactive, it means that the drug has bad bioactivity. So the objective here is to classify whether the drug molecule has good or bad activity, which is corresponding to active or inactive. But today we're not going to focus on the classification, but we're going to focus on how you can handle the missing data. Of the 229 variables, the remaining 228 variables are called the molecular descriptor. So they represent the physical chemical property that describe the unique characteristics of the drug molecule in terms of the charge, the molecular connectivity, the solubility, etc. And on the right here, you see the protein structure of the dihydrofolate reductase or the DHF. Okay, so here is an outline of what we will learn today. There's going to be a total of five steps. So the first step is we're going to load in the DHFR data set. So we're going to load that directly from the data professor GitHub. And number two, we're going to check for missing data. We're going to soon find out that there is no missing data in the DHFR. So the data is clean. So therefore, we will create a function where we can randomly introduce missing data to the data set. And so we will create a function that will introduce randomly missing data into the data set. And so after that, we're going to check again for the missing data. Okay, so hint there should now be missing data. And the fifth and final step, we're going to handle the missing data. So this is the highlight of this episode. So there are two options that you will decide what to do. So the first option is to simply delete all entry with missing data. So this is the simplest way to do, uh, however. So the downside of this is you're going to miss some of the data points that are present in your data. And so therefore, you will reduce the number of samples or compounds. Okay. And the second approach is to perform what is called imputation. Imputation is the process in which you impute or you replace the missing value with another value. For example, the columns mean or the columns median which we will show you how to do that in R. Okay, so let's jump in. So this code will be available on the GitHub of the data professor. And so the links are down below in the description. We're going to start by loading the R curl library so that we can directly load the data set from the data professor GitHub. And so this will read it into an object called the DHFR. So we see that there is a total of 325 objects or 325 compounds and there are 229 variables. So let's have a look. So as we recall of the 229 variables, we have one of them as the bioactivity, which is either active or inactive. And then we have 228 molecular descriptors shown here. Okay, and then we could scroll to the right, right? Okay, so now we're finished with step one. 
Let's go on to the second step. So now we're going to check for missing data. So we're going to nest two function and use both of them. So the first one is we're going to determine whether the DHFR contain any missing data set. And we're going to embed this or nest this into a sum function. So what this does is that first it will retrieve a vector of whether your DHFR is NA. So it will return a list or vector of true or false. And then it will apply the summation function in order to do a count of the total number of NA that are present in your data set. So let's run that by hitting on the control enter. And so we see that there is no missing data. So it's zero. So this means that your data set is clean. We're finished with step two. Okay, so now we're going to go to step three. Okay, so the third step is when the data is clean, we will now introduce randomly missing data points or NA to the data set. And so here we create a custom function called NA.gen as in generate. And so the function takes in two arguments as input. So the first one is data, which is the data object, which is the DHFR data object. And the second is N or the number of NA to add to the data set. So as in the example below here, we're going to apply the NA.gen function to the DHFR data object. And we're going to add 100 NA randomly into the data set. And so we're going to create a data set that is not clean. So in a nutshell, this code will iterate while the number of iteration is less than n, or let's say if we say 100 and plus 1, because after iteration, it will perform only 99 NA addition. So then we added 1 so that it will perform the actual 100. And so what it does is it will perform two indexing. So the first index will determine the row to randomly select. And the second index will determine the column to randomly select. So let's say in the first iteration, it determines that index 1 will be 10 and index 2 will be Five. So it will add NA to row number 10 and column number 5. So let's say that in iteration 2, index 1 becomes 20 and index 2 becomes 30. So it means that uh, this is 20 and this is 30. So it will add NA to row number 20, column number 30. Okay, so it does this iteratively until it satisfies the loop. Okay, so to use the na.gen function, you can use either this line or this line, right? So in this line, you just say the name of the data object and then the number, how many times you want to add the na. But for this one, you have to put in the proper order, right? You have to start with the DHFR followed by the number because it is the same order as we have put in the data, comma, n. However, if you don't want to follow this order, you're going to have to specify n equals and then the number, which is the same n here. And then you have to specify data equals and then the data object name, which is the same name here, data and data. If you switch the number 100 and then DHFR, this will not work. Okay, you could give it a try. Okay, so now let's run the na.gen function. Okay, and now we're going to run this using 100 NA addition. And now let's go ahead and proceed to step number four. So let's now check for the number of NA. Okay, so the total number of NA is now 100. And so we're going to do a check of which column contains NA. So we're going to use co-sums function. So we're going to nest that is an A into the co-sums function. Right, so I haven't yet shown you how it looks like if we just apply is an A with the DHFR. So it will return a vector of true false. So if it's true, it means that there is missing data at the particular position, right? So we're going to run embed this SNA into cosums function. And now we're going to see which column has NA, right? So for example, this column or this variable has one NA and this one has one NA. Mo2D lip violation has two NA. It might be easier to have a look at the cosums SNA 
inside the view function. So we're going to paste that in. And so here we can easily see which variable has how many NA. Okay, okay. And now we're going to look at the particular row containing the missing data. So what we want to do here is we're going to define a variable object called missing data and we're going to put in the name of the data object which is dhfr so inside the bracket you will see that there are two values separated by a comma so the left value here which is highlighted represents the row and the right part here represents the columns so the exclamation mark is an inverse of the function complete.cases, right? So it means that for the DHFR object, which cases are not complete? And then it will show the specific rows which are not complete, meaning that which row contains missing data? It will show that row in this new data frame that we have created. Okay, and so let's see. The summation of the missing data of this newly created data frame and it's equivalent to the missing data in the original dhfr okay so let's now have a look at the missing data so let's type in the view command enter okay so this is the data frame of the data subset that contains missing data So we might need to scroll a bit to find the NA in here. It might be challenging to find some. Okay, right here. Spot an NA here. So this is one out of 100 NA. And so NA will be distributed randomly. So here is another NA. Here is another NA. Right, and this is an NA, and this is also an NA. So there will be 100 of NA distributed randomly throughout this subset of the data set. Right, and this subset comprises of 89 rows and 229 variables, which means that it's rather distributed in 89 compounds. And so we're finished with the fourth step now and we're going to move on to the fifth step and final step is we're going to handle the missing data so we have two options so the first option is to clean the data set meaning that we're going to omit we're going to delete every na from the data set and so let's do that and so the clean data will now have zero missing data and however the clean data let's look at the data size so after deleting all na we are left with 236 compounds right because 236 plus 89 will be equivalent to 325 so that would represent almost a quarter of your data set which is a big chunk of data. So is there a better way? Well, the second way is to perform imputation, right? So imputation is where you will replace the missing value with another value, such as the columns mean or median. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to create a new data object called dhfr.impute. And so we're just going to dump the DHFR data set into this. So it's going to contain duplicate information, kind of like making a clone of the DHFR data set so that we can compare between the original data set and the new data set, which we have performed imputation. Okay, so now the DHFR impute data set has the same exact dimension as the original one. Okay, so this block of code is a custom function which will iterate through the whole data set to determine which position is NA and at that position it will determine the column's mean or the column's median value and it will replace the NA with the mean or median. Okay, so let's try this out and then
Okay, so NA is present in the Y. So maybe not a good idea to add the NA to the Y. So what we could actually have done is to skip the Y variable and perform the NA generation for the remaining X variables, which is the 228 variables. So in here, we could have just put in DHFR. Okay, now Y is no longer present and we should read in the data set again. Start over, right? determine that there is no NA, and then we will take out the Y variable, and we're going to generate 100 random NA into the data set. And now we have 100 NA, which is added to it. And then we're going to do the imputation again. We're going to do the mean imputation again, right? Apply this imputation of the mean and okay, now the mean imputation gives zero missing data. Okay, so if we do this again, we run the, we create the dhfr.impute data frame again, and then we will determine how many missing data. So there's 100, and then we will perform this median imputation. And let's see again. Now there's zero. Okay. So that pretty much wraps up this episode. And in the next one, we're going to cover how you can perform imputation using other approaches. So we're going to use other data set which might not always be a numerical value. So what if your NA is a factor or a ordinal or a categorical variable? What will you do? Categorical or ordinal variables such as low, medium, high, if you're missing the data for these variables, how will you handle this type of data? So we're going to cover that in the future videos. Okay, so thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.